songwriters. Okay. Artists, singers, artists. Oh, 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 okay. See, see what we got. See what we got in the house tonight. Well, if you look around the room tonight, look around, look around. There are probably people here that have natural talent that will blow most of today's artists off the charts. There's probably some bands right here in Memphis that are probably some of the best that you've ever heard. Get our solos out of this world. Dramas with beats for days. And singers that can do unmatched vocal lungs. So why not these people famous? Okay. Well, first of all, we almost realize that the world is full of talented people. And while your friends may tell you that they cannot live without your music, <laughs> the first step for you, artists, managers, producers, singers, songwriters, is to take your ego down a notch, all right? You need to accept. You need to accept what you know and what you don't know. You not only need to know what your talent is capable of, but you need to understand the business that you're trying to get into. Now, talent comes naturally for some of us, myself included, <laughs> but for the rest of us, it's hard work. And hard work actually takes hard work. And the people that generally break out are the ones that work hard to make their dreams a reality. So basically what we're saying here is talent alone won't get you there. You need to be smart about what you're using your talent for. Don't let time pass you by because you think you have the best voice in the world and someone is going to randomly stumble up on your YouTube video and sign you to a multi-million dollar deal. Now as I was scrambling today, pulling, making notes for this evening, I ran across an interview that Will Smith was doing with an interviewer. And the person was talking to him about his success, and the person said, well, he noted that Will Smith was an exceptionally talented individual. And what I liked, which is the reason why I included it here, was Will Smith's response. And he said, I never really viewed myself as talented. I believe where I excel is ridiculous and sickening work ethics. He said, while others are eating, I'm working. While others are sleeping, I'm working. And while others are resting, I'm still working. <laughs> Looks like it kind of worked out for him, right? So tonight we're going to be talking about work ethics. We're going to be talking about business. And one of the things that I think everybody needs to be very clear on, that no one, I know Elizabeth can talk about this, no one in this business, music business, wants to work with a talented but lazy individual. They want to see that this is what you absolutely want. They want to know that your heart and soul is in it and that you will go to the limit to make it happen. They want to know that you're willing to work not expect that all the work will be done for you just because you have a great voice or just because you can really play a certain instrument. Remember now, there are a lot of talented people, and one thing about being talented, you can be replaced. So you kind of got to stay a little humble. Utilize your hard work to promote the talent to prove that you should be doing what it is that you want to do for a living, it's going to take you to the next level in your career. Now, we've said it once, say it again tonight, you have to take each step. You can't skip, there's no elevator to success. You have to take each step of the stairs of success to get to the top to be successful in today's music industry. The days of the handouts and hookups, they are over. Kurt, you're giving out my hookups, man. 
perseverance, business acumen will separate you from the 95% of the musicians who fail to achieve success. The successful 5% are constantly finding ways to grow, finding ways to maintain and monetize their fan base. So if you're serious about advancing your music career, you need to prepare yourself for what's ahead. So while we realize that practically everybody in this room is talented in some shape, fashion, or form, we're going to be talking about some other things, how to take that talent to the next level. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions, and you're going to find out exactly who's sitting here on the panel and what they do. Knowledge is power. Believe it or not, it's easier than ever to be a successful musician. The reason why many artists fail is because of the lack of knowledge. And tonight what we want to do is share information with you about business techniques and some things that are uh, just going to help you on your way in your musical journey. Now most often as an independent musician, most likely, maybe not in every case, but most likely you are your own manager, your own booking agent, your own publicist, your own designer, your own investor, your own marketer, your love and passion for music may be why you're here tonight, but understanding the business of music is why you might have the opportunity to stay here. Okay? It's very important that you surround yourself with professionals who will take care of the aspects of your career that you may not be equipped to handle. So tonight, we have picked a select group of speakers that will share their skill sets with you. So we want to give them a hand for taking time out. <laughs> and share their information and knowledge so that you might be empowered. Okay? So what we're going to do right now before we get started, we're going to ask each panelist to introduce themselves, tell you what they do, I have a series of questions, and I hope you have some too. So I'm going to start to my immediate right. I knew I shouldn't have picked this up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Elizabeth Montgomery. Um, I am the CFO, which is the Chief Financial Officer for Ardent Music LLC, which is the parent company of Ardent Studios. Uh, we have five divisions of the company. The sexiest that I like the best is the studio. Um, then we have a Christian record label, we have a mainstream record label, we're a music publisher, as well as a film department. So we oversee quite a lot here. Um, I've been here 19 years. Yes, I do drink from the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> um, please don't judge me by um, what I appear to look young. Um, but uh, yes, it's, it's quite interesting. You know, all the different aspects of the industry that art and trust touch. I'm looking forward to giving y'all some of my knowledge. Oh, my name is Darius B. Williams. I'm a freelance photographer and photographic artist. I, I work with musicians, singers, just about anybody who needs really good pictures. And I really love working on projects. You know, we're talking about album cover design. I have a team of people that I've actually partnered with to help artists present their best image. That's what I do. Uh, my name is uh, Kirk Casey Clayton. Uh, I'm a music producer, songwriter, uh, musical director uh, for a lot of the uh, old school, as we say, old school groups uh, that are currently out on tour right now. Um, and um, got a couple of Grammy nominations. I produce records in basically every genre and work with different artists in every genre from gospel to rap to country to R&B, bluegrass, jazz. Um, and I think uh, to just expand on what uh, Ms. Walker was saying earlier, I think uh, the key to this uh, this industry is how diverse you are in your talent. Uh, and as a producer, um, you don't try to pigeonhole yourself because sometimes if they view you as one thing, then, and if that one thing is not a desire or a need, then they're going to go to somewhere else. So that's why you try to have to be as diverse as you can with your talents. Uh, and even me, uh, which I, mean, I just let everybody know that if 
everything she's saying is true. It's not about, I, I've never viewed myself as the, the best. I just view myself as probably one of the most consistent in what I do. And that's what people gravitate to. And have to be either happy shit or not. Am I like to go on no Grammys here. I'm uh, Jamie Stokes, and I'm a working um, artist here in Memphis. They're coming, hopefully. I'll have to get on that same thing. But um, I've been a creative um, since I could walk and talk. Um, I haven't spent much time trying to box myself um, through that process, and as I've been evolving. Um, but I do um, love working with artists. Um, one of them is here today, Juju Bushman. Um, you probably heard of Iffy. Um, but I'm an avid um, lover of the arts, supporter of the arts, and um, formulating all of that creative experience into business. Um, whether that, um, I guess my biggest client right now, um, or the one that I target the most is myself. I'm that living, breathing business card. Um, any information that I have or have accumulated over the years and learned um, just by paying attention, edu educating myself, I'm always happy to share that with others. So um, today's topic um, for me is style and um, your brand as an artist and how that may help or hurt um, the product, um, such as your music or different skill set that you might be trying to promote. So um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, good evening. My name is Angela Green, and I'm an entertainment attorney. And so my job is basically to, uh, to basically keep the business and the money flowing with the contracts. So that's what I do. <laughs> uh, I'm also the founder of Position for Millions, which is an entertainment business affairs consulting company. And we pretty much consult with independent artists on foundational things that they can do for their own businesses, such as the copyrights, the publishing, um, ISRC codes and such, as well as allowing them access to uh, economical entertainment law services. So, that's what I do. There's still some seats. Yeah, there's some seats open. Don't be shy. Excuse me, morning. You can't be shy in this business. Yeah. 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 This is not shy business. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, I had planned, I'm still leaning over looking for Myra Mays because I had really wanted to start this off dealing completely with social media. We're going to give him a few more minutes to get here and hopefully he'll get here. And if not, then uh, we'll do social media. We'll talk about it the way that we do. And I will be the expert. We'll, we'll sit in Myra and see. So what? Oh, well, could you go and call her? Come on, come on, come on. Let me text her. Yeah, take it, send her a text. Mm -hmm work around that. So what we'll do is, I'm going to go all the way to the end of the room because the reason why I want to do that, what is this uh, uh, seminar about? Business. 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 And talent is what? Talent. Here you go. What she said, 10 percent and 9 percent? <laughs> she got that phrase down. <laughs> 10 percent of all of everything is but it's 90 percent of your business. All right. So we know that talent is never enough, and in solidifying your path to success, it's really about the business. And I heard Ms. Green, Attorney Green, say that, you know, I'm the one that does the contracts, the agreements. So you can be very talented, and your business affairs are just sloppy. Your business affairs, you've got gigs coming out the AU, but no contracts, no agreements. No, not then. You just know you got gigs. So even with that, or you and your partners got together and y'all wrote songs, and we don't know who split what. We don't. So let's talk a little bit about. We're very talented, but our business structure sucks. And <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's very in this business. In order to get paid, you have to sign something, you have to register somewhere. You basically have to have your information where it needs to be in order to make your money. So if you're a writer and you've written a song that's being played on the radio, if you are not registered with BMI, ASCAP, or CSAC, they're collecting money, but you're not going to get paid because they don't know who to pay it to. 
and they will sit on it for a while, and after a while, it's going to become somebody else's money. Um, if you're being played on the um, internet radio stations, if you're being played on the cable radio stations, and you are an artist or a uh, owner of a um, the sound recording, if you have a registered with Sound Exchange, you're not going to get paid. And, and they have money for people right now. They're constantly asking artists to go and check check their list to see if they are sitting on money for you. So it's, it's very important that you do what you need to do for your business, have things in order, and it's also important that you understand the contracts that you're getting into because what you sign could help your career go or it could also stall your career. I've seen situations where uh, people have signed contracts and then because of a dispute, all of a sudden they can't make any moves. They can't move forward with their career and they're pretty much tied up in, in this business, especially if you're in certain areas of the business, youth is very important. So to lose two, three, four years of your youth could be detrimental for your career um, in this business. So it's very important that you, you handle the business and that you function as a business owner because you are, your product is your music and you are your own self-employed business. And you have to run yourself like a business and you have to surround yourself with the individuals who can lead, guide, and direct you so that you can make those sound business decisions. We are the Jujus. And do we need to, who owns that? Because we've been together for the past six years. We've been performing, we've been doing shows, we've been doing everything. Now he made me mad because he found another girlfriend, so I'm going to leave back. <laughs> Who owns it? Or if we didn't, should we set that up? I mean, where we need a band agreement? We need a band agreement. We need a band agreement. We need a band agreement. So you decide all that. <laughs> and the best time to decide all that is when everybody's happy. Oh, <laughs> everybody's feeling generous and, and, and uh, don't mind signing off on uh, and coming to some sort of agreement. Um, because uh, if there ever becomes a dispute. Um, you, you don't mind going into the studio and vibing and having a good time and creating that music and nobody needs to sign anything when you're doing that. But then once you create that song and it sounds great and everybody's thinking, hey, this may be the next, you know, big thing, then all of a sudden nobody can sign anything without talking to their attorney and I gotta get with my manager and I need this. And if nobody signs anything, that song could get stalled and shelled. And I've seen that several awesome songs that have never seen the light of day because they could not come to terms on the right of publishing and the copyrights. And so it's very important, although you know most people may think it's a, a I guess a mood kill to talk about business. Right. But it's better to talk about the business and get it down before you start creating. And that way once you create that product, there's no there's nothing to stop it from moving. It's gonna go wherever it needs to go because all the decisions have been made uh, on the front end. And people will get amnesia. <laughs> yes. You just say that. They, they, I'm being realistic, you know, as a producer and a songwriter. People, like, like, like Ms. Rain was saying, when it's a feel good moment, everybody's vibing. Everybody happy. Toasting. And as soon as there's one dollar to be made, and there's no paper, people will get amnesia about who wrote what, who was there. Sometimes they say, well, my cousin was there too, so he deserved 10% of this song. And, and, and I've seen friendships basically literally break up because they want to stay there are times people want to be friends and then there are times they want to do business sometimes you can't do both or you can do both but you got to make sure you do it on the front end so that way you can stay friends so that way there's no confusion on the back end but I've seen friendships break up I've seen marriages break up simply because they did not handle their business on the front end People get upset, and I'm telling you, it's just sometimes the potential of a song brings out the greed in you. And so you have to keep that in mind. I didn't know it was hard out here for a pimp to be a hit. I'm saying. <laughs> <kidding. laughs> so, you have to remember, too, in copyright law, nothing is binding unless it's in writing. Yeah. So no, it doesn't matter. There are no verbal agreements that can hold up in court with copyright law. If you're, yeah, if you're going into the if you're going into the studio to write a song, or if you're going over to somebody's house to write a song, you know, have there, there's a simple form. I think you can find it on the net. It's just a split sheet, but have that split sheet with you, and just like at the end, go ahead and 
hey, let's go ahead and take care of this now. Yeah. Right? And just go ahead. Well, we're happy. Yeah, while we're happy. <laughs> you know, while everybody's feeling good. You know, and get it and get it done then. Because I've I've been uh, involved with some really nasty situations. And what happens is as a label or as a publisher, you know, if we know there's gonna be conflict, we're gonna step back. You know, and then that's just immediately in to I mean, a great song is not a great song if people can't come to an agreement on who owns it. So, Another good thing I, I tell people in my class when I teach at the university. Does anyone know what the difference between a contract and an agreement is? If you think you do, make great change. What, what's, what's the difference? A uh, contract is binding, right? And an uh, agreement is just something. There isn't a difference. There is no difference. Let me explain it. Because what happens is when people say, hey, let's just drop an agreement, then you think, okay, we're just friends. We're just friends, just gonna, you know, because agreements sound more friendly. If I say, Let's drop a contract. People are more stand. Oh, well, hold on! I got to step back before I do this. So when it's all said and done, you've got to sign something. Whether it says this is an agreement, or whether it says this is a contract. When it's all said and done, it's binding. And you have to understand, business is business. It's nothing personal. And that's why we're all here. You got to understand, this is business. You cannot expect to make a million dollars or two dollars a day. <laughs> Well, why are you talking, Kurt? You know, keep your groove going. Because, you know, I was thinking, we were talking earlier today, and I told you, you know, on my computer, I, I got Pro Tools on my computer. I, I got Reason on my computer. I know the software. How many people here got Pro Tools on their computer? See there? You got Reason. Okay. So, am I a producer? I, got, I know the software. And I have it on my computer, and actually, you know, I, I can make some beats too. This, this, this is a very, very touchy. <laughs> so you're going to tell me I'm not producing? No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> but let, let, me, let me just put it this way. It, and this is just my opinion. Just because you've gone to Guitar Center or eBay or whatever and you've ordered, you know, Cubase or Pro Tools or Logic or whatever, and you've ordered all the gear. And you've got, you know, the new speakers and does not make you a studio, does not make you a producer, does not make you a songwriter. You know, what what establishes you is your track record. You can have all the gear, you know, but just like I was telling <laughs> Miss Walker today, I got keys to a car, but they don't make me a mechanic. So you have to understand there's experience. You know, and things that, you know, real producers, real engineers, real songwriters that we do, we study our craft. And that's why you go to them, and that's why they get paid the money that they get paid, or we get paid the money that we feel we deserve, simply because we're going to bring what you have, you know, and we're going to mold it to where it's something commercially, commercially solid and valuable to the public. Now, you may have something and it sounds good to you. This is being realistic. It sounds good to you, sounds good to your boys, sounds good to your mom. But they are not the ones that's going to buy it. So you have to understand the reality of this industry. So that's why you have to come to an art studio. You know, or my studio, Casey. <laughs> You know, or it goes to a Jason Carr, you know, or Nico Lyrics, or, you know, and I can go, because what we do for a living, this is what we've been studying, this is what, you know, this is how we feed our family, this is not a hobby for us. And these are things you have to understand, so just because you buy the software, that doesn't mean you know how to use the software, because when it's all said and done, you can have all the greatest output. And, and let me just say like this, I've seen people go into studios, and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and come out with crap. And I've seen other guys go into an eight-track studio and come out with a hit, simply because they knew what they were doing. So you have to understand what everyone's role is. And and, and I can't do what Miss Green does. I can't do what Miss Montgomery does. I can produce records. That's what I do for a living. So don't try to come in and try to do what I do. <laughs> And what we're doing, guys, I hope you're getting some questions kind of formulated in your head because we're going to just, I just got a few questions so to kind of pull information 
out of each of the speakers and at the same time stimulate what's going on inside of you so you can ask really great questions. So I know you got some. Yeah, now, do you absolutely can. Please. All right. Uh, and this kind of goes to what Casey was talking about. When you are an artist, you have to surround yourself with professionals at the level that you want to be seen. So when it comes to production, when it comes to the studio, when it comes to your image, I think Jamie can attest to this, you know, the image that you put out has to match the level of professionalism of your music. If it doesn't, there's a disconnect. And what happens is your audience is confused. They don't understand, you know, I'm looking at this CD cover and, it, you know, it, there may be a Grammy Award winning song on there, but they'll never hear it because they looked at the album and said, this looks like some slot. Or you sold it at the gas station. Or you sold it at the gas station. <laughs> I mean, so there, it's a, it's a total package when it comes to promoting yourself as an artist. You have to do everything at the level that you want to be seen and recognized. I think one thing that's important to understand, and I don't know if we'll get a chance to get to that tonight, and that is, you know, your overall budget so that you, you know, splice up the money so you have a little bit to kind of uh, put on to all of the pieces of what it is that you're dealing with. So while you guys are talking, one thing about uh, being an artist and being, I would say, accepted as a successful artist is your look, your image. If you don't look successful, then it's going to be very difficult for the buying public to think that you're successful. So if you are a star, you got to look the part. And I know, uh, Corey, if you're going to kind of come down just a little bit, because I know that Darius brought some images. And at the same time, uh, Jamie, just kind of talk a little bit about developing that image and what it's like. You know, like I heard you say, you work with Iffy, and I know she's got some amazing shots that I've seen. So in developing that image and, and talking to the audience about looking like a star, because, you know, you may not have reached it yet, but at least you can look the part. Exactly. I wrote some stuff down just because I'm a communicator. I can go on the tangents. I can talk about this all day. So I just want to be pretty succinct, succinct about the things that I spoke about today. But first and foremost, foremost, you're kind of just touching on this. You're an artist, you're a person, but you're a product. And um, you have to think about every aspect of um, yourself and how you might be perceived. And um, whether that's um, on your social media or yourself in person, all of these things, like Darius just said, they have to be consistent. So just being aware of that. So what you want to do, first and foremost, of course, is start to differentiate yourself in that particular market. What makes you different from another person? Um, Iffy and Juju, they play very different music. Um, their styles, their taste, how they present themselves publicly is very different. Their markets are completely different, and their styles um, show that. Um, so you want to define that. You want to position it in the right places, um, outside of the gas station parking lot, and um, manage it. Um, so um, what I like to do as a working artist is not always just only deal with art and artists and creatives and how we think and how we create. I'm pretty in tune with that because that's what I am. Um, I like to take uh, what brands like Coke or Pepsi or actual products, um, businesses, how are they structured, how do they present themselves, what makes a popular brand, what makes a strong brand, what makes a successful brand. Um, so I usually like to go through, I'll read um, Black Enterprise to Forbes, read what they have to say about different things like that and then translate it into what I do as an artist and as a creative. So I found a really good article on Forbes um, today that kind of breaks that down, just branding 101, which branding as an artist, that's your style. It's, it's, it goes hand in hand, it's the same thing. So define your aspirations and goals. Define them specifically. Decide whether or not you want to be a hometown favorite if your, your career will just span the tri-state area. Are you trying to have a Grammy? Do you want to be famous in New York all the way to LA? So your brand and your style can't only translate and make sense here in Memphis. It's got to be global, it's got to be universal. Two, do your homework, do your research. Um, study the success of others. Um, I think it's very important to study those that came before you, things that 
um, influence inspire me from childhood to now. You know, it's it's not just about the people, the cool people that I walk around with every day. Um, I really don't believe that anything is really new. Um, if you take a person like Michael Jackson, his flair and style as an artist, down with the jackets, the embellishments, all of that, that's, we've seen that in our history books and, you know, class in elementary school. So he found a way to take stuff that spoke to him or inspired him and made it his own and globally, you know, was one of the greatest artists to ever live. Um, determine your style. How would others describe you? Um, and it has to be consistent with the market that you're in. If I'm a hip hop artist and I'm walking around in cowboy boots and cowboy hats and you know plaid, it doesn't really make sense to my audience. Um, being an artist doesn't always have to be a selfish thing. It can't always be a selfish thing. I have to think about my audience. As much as I want to express myself and be me and be free for the day, I have to think about how it's going to affect my audience. So. Um, keep that in mind. Um, assess your current state. Where are you now? Um, I am still, I'm not where I want to be. I have my goals, my aspirations, my dreams are big. So um, that doesn't stop me from building that image, building that, the potential of what I can become now. Um, I cannot afford to buy the couture that's at Fashion Week off the runway and whatever, what have you. So um, finding a way to do that on your own scale, on your own budget, it, it can happen. I, I can find clothes at the thrift store, Walmart, um, you know, all kinds of places. I won't be like, oh, that's too cheap for me. Like, it's all going to happen. It's going to... Um, come to life by the way I put it together, how I present it, how I wear it, and how I own it as a person. Um, so you want to make sure that you're putting the, the things in place to, to get you where you want to be. And um, that doesn't mean that because I don't have such a big budget that I walk around with holes in my clothes or, you know, or anything that would make you not think that I'm serious about what I'm doing or that I'm not worth investing in. Create a plan. Um, and that's beyond your social media and all of that. Every aspect of you has to be accounted for. Um, even the way that I choose to speak every day and communicate um, socially and in person. I have to work on saying um less, but um, all of these things I think about. <laughs> I just said it. See what I mean? um, I'm working on it. But every aspect of you, your style is tangible and intangible. So your clothes, your hair, your behavior, are you that girl that's always sloppy drunk at the club and, you know, that whole phase of the artists that when they weren't wearing underwear and getting out of limos and all of that stuff, Britney cutting her hair, you know, you have to think about how that affects your audience. I don't necessarily agree with all of that that happened. I understand, like, sometimes, yeah, it's nice to not wear underwear, but I'm, I'm uh, Walking out of a establishment that's lined with paparazzi, and I, you know, I'm trying to maneuver out of a big SUV. Is that the best idea? Maybe not. Even tonight, you know, I was like, oh, these cute little shorts, blah blah blah. You know, should I wear this? Should I wear that? No, like, I didn't know what kind of seating. I didn't know if there would be a table with a tablecloth. No. Would you? Would I be? You know, so you know, all of these things. So I'm trying to keep it all together. Right? Um, all of these things have to be taken account of. Uh, manage. The last thing is managing all of that. Manage that brand, manage that style. You're in control of it. Be consistent. Um, make sure that the person you are, I think I just said this also, um, that you are in media and in person are in sync. Avoid confusing your audience. Keep them in mind. Be original. Um, there's only one you. Embrace that. Uh, if style and picking out clothes is not your forte, if that's not your strong suit, get people to help you. Get a team around you that can help you. Don't think as an artist that you know everything about everything. You don't. And there are some people, even if you are versed in that, there, you know, I I'm, know some stuff about legal stuff, but I wouldn't trust my take on that over Miss Green's. I would enlist her help 100% and take her advice, trust her. Um, make sure that it highlights your personality. Um, 
we all have layers to ourselves like onions. Uh, there are different layers to me, but there are, I, I teach kids, so there's some parts of me that I have to keep under wraps publicly. Or that in certain venues and certain ar arenas, it's best to maybe keep that to myself and maybe downplay certain things. Um, know the trend. Don't always try to follow it. Focus more on being a trend and less about worrying about what others think about it. Uh, there's a lot I don't understand about the silver glove, but it worked. You know, it worked for him. Um, so trust yourself. Be able to evolve. Madonna is not the same person that we saw in the 80s. She's one of the um, few people that I've seen do it well. Prince. He's kind of kept everything pretty consistent, but he's evolved over time, too. And he knows how to work within his audience and within what he does well. Um, make sure you're making a statement. Be bold. And um, one person particularly that's been doing that um, recently that I like, Janelle Monet. You see her in a lot of black and white. Uh, she's almost dressed like a waiter or a ra waitress most of the time. Um, that comes from, a, I've heard that it's um, because her parents um, worked in service. They were servers. They had a lot of jobs that required her uniform or um, things of that nature. So she pays homage to that every day with the brand and the personality personality that she project, projects as, in, as an artist. And um, to see her being embraced and um, picked up by a brand like cover girl to be an emblem, you know, she's not the norm, she's not your typical, but she found a way to stay true to who she is and make it work okay. and still be successful. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. And just stay humble. Humility secures your legacy in this norm. I have a question yeah. for you. Yes. You know, in business, they say dress for the job you want rather than the job you have. Is that valid advice even as an artist? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, when I am a teacher, I, I teach ballet. I'm a performing and teaching artist through ballet. Um, so when I'm that person, I dress like a teacher. You won't see me um, in my other clothes that you might see me in, like <laughs> tight skirts or short things. That, that for me, you know, I'm confident, I'm strong, you know, it works for me. I like it. Um, I don't do it for anyone other than myself. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you're addressing for the job that you want. If you want to be perceived as a star or a um, particular type of artist, start however you can now being that now. And I think that's very important. Um, it'd be very hard for me to take Miss Green um, very uh, seriously if she was dressing how um, Beyonce dresses, maybe, right? <laughs> and, and I'll say that's something that I did not follow. And, 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 it, and, it, and it hurt me. Uh, when I started working here, I'd wear jeans and a t-shirt. And I wore je de jeans and a t-shirt, for those of you who know me, for a long, long time. And it hasn't been until maybe the last couple of years that I've really tried to start upping my game. But the fact is that damage of me being the t-shirt and jeans and some rock chick has really, in my opinion, kind of hurt some people's opinion of me. You know, it doesn't matter that I've been, you know, heading this company for quite some time. You know, they look back and see some young girl who used to wear a rock t-shirt, some holes in my jeans, and now I'm really having to go back and say, hey, look, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a responsible professional. You know, um, you know, I still have a hard time dressing as an accountant, right? So I, I go with what I call the rock accountant. But, you know, it really is important. And it's something that I wish that I had listened to, you know, 15 years ago. Because it's, it's been an uphill battle for me. So definitely, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't applaud more on that. Piece of advice. And it also has, from a production standpoint, when you're going to a production company or producers or whatever, it also helps simply define what direction you need to go in as well, because if they can see, you know, where you're going, where you can 
because that's what a producer's job is also. Because a lot of times the artists really don't know what what they are, who they are, because you ask most singers, well, what's your style? Well, I do it. Yeah. <laughs> they always say, I can't sing it all. <laughs> we don't need to sing it all. <laughs> we, we gotta we gotta we gotta eventually, you know, find something that people say, oh well, she's this or he's this or he reminds you of this because you know the general public gravitate to what they know and what they're familiar with. So if you are a Michael Jackson type, it's easy to say, well, they have a little Michael Jackson. They have and so it's easy for people to say, oh, yeah, okay, now I won't listen to that because I like that. So once you come into, a, and it, like I said, if you're, if you're you know, a rocker, if you're you know, a, a reggae, or if you're doing you know, hip hop, whatever, and if that's who you really are, now, with that being said, be true to yourself. Don't try to be something that you're not. Just think that you're just going to get in the door just to make some money. Because trust me, if you're in this industry just to make money, you're in the wrong industry. I'm telling you that right now. So you have got to live what you, you know, what you write about. You got to live what you're gonna be about as an artist. And trust me, your audience will find you. Yeah, so every part, sorry, every little part of you, um, it might be safer to not express that to the public and show that. So whatever layer or whatever aspect of that um, self, you know, highlight that. Target it. Make sure it's working towards that specific mar market. The fact that I, you know, um, you know, love tribal prints and Afrocentric things, and you know, all of that doesn't mean that I'm walking around in a full like African ensemble every day. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it just for the audience or wherever I am or what I'm trying to do for that day, it just doesn't make sense. You know, or I'll still find a way to for me personally to be that person by you know, maybe making sure that my hair is not straight or, you know, having a little piece of that, you know, that makes me feel good. But um, whatever choice you make, make sure that you're um, <clears throat> capable and strong enough emotionally um, to be accountable for it to the public because we know how un unforgiving they can be. Um, a star walking to the, going to the gas station and just being a regular person, you know, out looking different from how you see them on the red carpet can hurt you immensely um, in certain instances. I hate going back to Britney all the time, but they really did a number on her just, you know, going through a phase. So um, just be careful of all of those things. But, um, so no, 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 no. Well, what I was going to say, uh, talent aside, because everybody in the room is very talented, talented, I mean, talent aside, so far, you guys are following with me. We have learned, we signed agreements when we're all happy. We have learned that we need an agreement so that when we are unhappy, it's already laid out. So we already know the roles and the responsibilities that each of us have. We've learned that we need a style. We need an image. We want to be trendsetters and not necessarily follow trends. We want to define who we are, set specific goals for our look, and our look, if I'm correct, basically sells who you are as an artist. So far, we've learned the importance of production and having an experienced producer who understands all of the components and elements of production so that you will come out of the studio with a well-produced project. We've also learned that your image captured on a canvas or however he does it so that he can sell your album or sell you is extremely important so you don't look like you are selling yourself from the gas station, but you look like you should be on the rack in uh, Best Buy. So far, we got, we got that. So now that we've gotten all of that, we're going to slide down here on the end. And so we done did all of this. What do the record label really want? Do I have to come in totally packaged? What is it that the labels really look for? I mean, are you looking at, do I have to come in and look like a rock star? Do I come in and act like a rock star? You know, if you're reading everything, the record label want everything you got. Is they want two thirds. If you get that, well, if you got out of the hole, we want two thirds of So what is it? Do I have to have a whole bunch of streams? Do I have to have a whole bunch of downloads? 
do I have what do I have to do because I'm going to get this meeting and the reason why I went that way is for you to understand that the meeting is so very important whether it's local regional or hey we're fortunate enough to get the meeting with one of the majors but you need to understand the dynamics of the meeting because at the end of the day whether the record label is here or in New York they all want to make money so you did all this stuff now it's all on you. What do you want? What do you want from me? What do you want? <laughs> you know, I've, I, you know, I've been asked that question. Like, how do I get a record deal? Yeah. And, um, you know, and I have what some people have called like a little flippant answer, but it really is the truth. The way to get a record deal is prove that you don't need one. <laughs> 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 So the way the way that you get a record deal is prove that you don't need one. That's I mean, and you know, the, right? that's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's um, but you know, I'll I'll elaborate a little. Um, you know, I think that coming in with and I'll, and I'll go down go down the line here. When you come in and you have a complete package. You know, and you have an album that has stellar album art. I have seen so much bad album art that I wanted to create like an ardent blog of bad album art. <laughs> but it's not good for publicity and it's not good for clients. So, but I wish that there was some clause that everybody who came to Ardent had to hire somebody like this guy. You know, because there are so many albums out there that sound amazing and have the worst album art known to man. You know, that will never be hard. Because if you've got bad album art, nobody, nobody in the industry is going to open it. Nobody's going to listen to it because it's their first, the first impression of you. You know, you know, if even if you are not, <laughs> uh, even if it's not album art. You know, let's say you've got an appointment with a record executive. They're going to start checking you out on Facebook. They're going to look at your website. What, is, what are they going to look for? They're going to look for professional photos shot of you. This guy, you know? So you mean this don't work? No. <laughs> no. No. You can, have, you, can, you can have some really cool shots. Yeah. You know, you can be, you can... Convey, and that's that's kind of getting into her style, right. you know, lecture. But you can you can really convey yourself a different way. But the fact is, you know, to get on, you have to act like you're on. You know, you've got to show that you've got it together and that you're taking your career seriously. And that's every aspect. So you've got great album art. Now you've got you know some great photos for your website and to your social media. You know, now you've got that. Now you need something. So they've got past, you know, opening your CD. Now they're listening to it. The next thing, you've got to have quality recording. You know, quality production. You know, and following a producer's advice on, you know, hey, the song's too long. Or, hey, why don't you change the hook here? You know, and they will help you. And that's what you're paying them for. So don't argue with them. You're paying them. It's kind of like going to the you, <laughs> going. It's like going to the mechanics, and the mechanic says, "Hey, you're gonna need new brakes." Well, you figured that out because when you're pulling into the parking lot, your brakes your brakes stop working, right? So you hired somebody to fix your brakes, and then you're gonna argue with them on how to fix your brakes. No, you've hired them. You're trusting them. Trust your producer. You know, there's so many times that I've heard. Um, records have crossed over my desk, or I've been at a panel, and they forgot to get it mastered. And how do you forget to get your, your music mastered? You know, I mean, it's, it, it's just that little detail that makes the difference on whether or not you're taking this seriously or not. Because if you're like, well, it's, you know, L. Nixon Company charged, I think it's like $65 a song. To master sixty-five dollars, you know, if you can't pay sixty-five dollars to get your song mastered to be played at a panel or to go to a meeting with a record exec, you don't need to be in the business. Let it you go. Know, let it go. Let it go. You know, because point. you can go get blood, go get plasma. <laughs> you know, you can figure out a way to get sixty-five dollars to get your record mastered. 
you know, or you know, I've had people walk into meetings with me and you know they haven't bathed in a week. You know, you know they don't look the part. You know, you've got to have a wrong image. You know, so you've got the album art, got the website, you got the producer, you've got a great sounding record. You know, you need to have style. You know, and you know, come in and act like you're a rock star, or look like a rock star, never act like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't go in and like shove everything on the floor and say, you are signing. <laughs> look, look at the part, right? But when you walk in there, before you do, you need to have a little cheat sheet because you need to sit down with Ms. Angela and gotten her to go, okay, you're willing to do this, and this and this and these are the points you know because you need to act or not act you need to know you need to know hey we are willing to sign you to a deal but since you don't have a long track record you know we're we're going to require full publishing you know until you get a you know track record if you you know sell a million copies we'll change it from full publishing to co-publishing well, you need to know what that means, you know, and you have to know, and that's, a, again, just showing them that you've taken the time to understand that each each part of these elements are important and that you've done your homework. Can I, can I say something? Oh, uh, of course you can, sir. You all got to understand one major thing. I'm going to be the realist of you. <laughs> when you come to this Montgomery, you all have to understand the reality of You're asking a complete stranger that don't know you from a can of paint to invest more than your family's house on you because you think you hot. I'm just being realistic. You're asking a complete stranger to do something that your own family members won't do. Go tell your mama, your daddy, your cousins to give you a hundred thousand dollars right now and see what they say. <laughs> so you have to understand when you're coming to a record company and you're, and you're trying to come in all cocky and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's, you got to understand, they don't know you, you don't have a track record, you ain't hot, you ain't got no spins, all right? Who is so cold? I'm, I'm just saying, that's what I'm saying, right? But, but, but the reality is, you have, you have to understand what, you have to understand their position. And their position is very simple. We have X amount of slots, and we're in this to make a profit. We're not signing you because we like you. We're signing you because we feel that we can make money with you, or money off of you. If you want when to money, 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 So, 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 what, so what everybody's saying is, we, we got to see the initial investment from you first. You got to invest in yourself first before you ask me to come in and put my time and my energy and, and put the screen's energy, you know, and to put everyone's energy in what you do, but you expect to just walk in and everyone just treats you like you've already made it, when you haven't done anything. If, you have, if you're not spending money on yourself, like you said, if you're not willing to spend $65 on matching your budget, then you're not ready. Say that. If you're, not willing to, more than $50 if you're not willing to spend more than fifty dollars on a quality photo shoot, be, that will last years. Be, because, because the main thing you're asking me to want to do, because you're asking him, I want my shoot to look like Beyonce. Well, you ain't paying Beyonce money. <laughs> I'm, just being, I'm just being realistic. This, this, this is what you're asking. Now he can give you those shots. He can give you those locations. He can give you all those things. Only if you're willing to invest. But even then, there are times, if you're coming in with the right attitude, you may say, you know what, I will help you out a little bit more because I believe and I see what you're trying to do. But you got to come in with the right attitude also. So once again, please understand how this industry works. Do not come knocking on this lady's door and, 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 say, and say, sign me right now. Or who are you? <laughs> and then get mad at her because she don't know who you are. Say that again. So these are things you have to understand because a lot of times, and this is what this forms about, because a lot of times people don't don't give y'all the real. Stop looking at TV. What is on BT? What is on TV? 
And this image I took about 10 years ago. This was released in Two thousand eight. Okay. But I, I took the pictures 10, 15 years ago. It could have been nineteen forty. It's right. a classic. It's timeless. Right. But an understanding of what it is he's trying to portray. That comes with the experience of being a photographer. The understanding of who his audience is, what you see and understand when you look at this. All of that is branding. So I've partnered with some people who do graphic design. I'm not a graphic designer. I don't know how to do but they do. And so I partnered with them and said, okay, well, what is the look that you're trying to portray? And then I can take a picture that makes sense, that, you know, actually sells you going forward, you know? So this has longevity. It actually uh, got nominated for a Best Product Packaging Award uh, two years ago. But we took the image like 15 years ago because it stood the test of time when it came to what it was he was trying to portray. That's from that other This is another music artists. Mm -hmm. That's one. Thank you. So, this is album art done by another friend of mine. She's an uh, extremely talented artist and he commissioned her. Did you hear the word commission? That means he paid her <laughs> <laughs> to do this album art for him. And when you look at this, you see the name, you see the art, and you know, on the front and the back, they're very consistent. Uh, and then he came to me and he said, I need some images, but the image needs to portray a certain thing. It needs to speak to who I am on this album, not who I am as a regular person. Because if I show you this, I'm going to show you the picture on the inside, and tell me what you think his profession is. Those of you who know him, don't say it. <laughs> Anybody want to guess what his profession is? Prison art. <laughs> look like he in a place of incarceration. <laughs> well, let me just tell you, this is a hip hop album, first of all. So really? the image had to be consistent with what it was he was trying to portray with his lyrics. Does he feel trapped? But what, is, what, what does he do in his regular life? He's an attorney. He's an attorney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's an attorney. He works. He works. Is that Kim? Uh, yeah, that's Kim. Yeah, that's Kim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the image. <laughs> so the image that I had to create for him had to speak to this alter ego of his. It had to talk about you know what he isn't. What he isn't in this picture is an attorney. Right. Uh, but it had to be specific to the project that he was talking about. It had to be something that he could be proud of, and he was so proud of it, he put it on the inside of his album cover. Uh, I gave him lots of shots that he would be selected. But it goes back to the music. But you want to listen? But it goes back to the music. But it goes back to what I'm saying, but he invested in his, his, his image. He invested. Yeah. So when you come to a photographer and you say, I'm going to take some pictures from my new album, but you have no concept of what your album is, then you have already started off on the wrong foot. Go back, do some research, right. and I promise you, the photo shoot will come out much better. The style team will have a better time of putting together an image for you. The producer will understand what it is you're trying to do with your music. You know, if I show him this and you, you see this, then you're going to be like, oh, okay, I, I have a style in mind that's going to fit what, you do, what you're trying to do. Then he'll listen to you, and then you can actually create something that will stand out. And that's really all our job is to help you be better. Yeah, actually, there's a big working on the project together. And actually, sometimes it helps because I think when we did the photo shoot mm -hmm. with the particular artists, we were playing a project. We were playing a project while they were doing their photo shoot to kind of get them in that mode and get him in that mode, so that way everybody's already in that you know in that moment. You know, because that way you know if you're a singer, you whatever you know, and you're singing your song, and you know it's you know sometimes those images are. But even if you're a singer-songwriter, even if you are behind the scenes, you know, you need to have some professional headshots because when people go to your website, they're going to see you and they're, they're not going to know anything about your writing style. They're not going to know anything about what your music sounds like. But they'll see this picture and decide, 
I promise you they will decide if they want to even listen to you or not. So that's something that you have to invest in. Now, that kind of segues into the other thing I want to talk about, which is budget. Um, <laughs> let me just say this. You should budget for the type of project that you want. Does it mean you have to spend the fortune? No, it doesn't. But there's also a way to do everything that you're trying to do. A lot of times people will say, well, I'm just going to cut corners on these photos because I'm investing so much in the studio. Or vice versa. You know, maybe they, their music isn't that strong, but they, they're really into their image. If you go either way, but you have to find the balance in that. And you have to understand that the people that you're hiring, you're hiring them because they are professionals doing the type of work that you need them to do. And because of that, they have to get paid for the work that they have to do. Now, the output that you get will be the input that you put into it. And I'm just going to say that. If you put $50 in, guess what? Your pictures are going to look like $50. <laughs> well, there, there, are other, there are other opportunities, and I'm, I'm fixing to say this, that I want to sell some art in here. Um, it's in the thing is, is connections and networking, knowing when there are opportunities. You know, the fact is, you know, Ardent has really been one of the foundation principles is mentoring. You know, our founder, John Fry, is a huge mentor. So we understand here that Memphis, the success of the city is going to impact the success of Ardent. You know, so the more successful everybody in this room is, 